The next project I want to do is to make some welding screens. I try and teach you guys uh, really well in the shop when we first start welding that you need to say welding and cover uh, audible sounds to those around you that you are about to weld. Now even if you're alone, these are really good practices. If I'm alone in my garage and I'm welding and I have a family member come from out of the house into the garage and I'm about to start welding, uh, it's a good thing for them to hear before they get into the garage. But uh, sometimes you're just in the mood of things and sometimes you're already busy welding and people are coming into your work environment. If the welding screens are nearby and set up and blocking the UV light, infrared light from getting to the uh, standby people, then that's really good. So we want to make sure that we can protect those that are coming into our workspace that might not know what we're doing. Another real positive of having welding screens, uh, if I were to move my table outside for a moment to start cutting or welding out there because my project's too big in the garage, I can still kind of set up a couple screens uh, in the area and try and block the light from those that might be coming out. Well, that's what we're going to get started on. Uh, we'll just start laying out a screen and we'll start measuring it and we'll see kind of what the style is that we want. All right, so I've got my dimensions from my plans. Started throwing stuff down here, all right? So the roughly outside is 47 and a half by 60. Um, I'm trying to make this screen fit inside the frame. Frame, I want something to look like this. I want the top corners to be chamfered and maybe the bottom corner is not, just to kind of mix things up a little bit, show you a different technique that maybe you haven't seen before. Um, I put down where all the holes are going to go. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to drill all of these so that I can put zip ties through them and not have little things hanging off and hitting me in the face and scratching my arm and whatnot. Any time to use the mag drill, we get to use it, right? I made a cut list, right? Maybe even label some of this stuff that we haven't done. So we're going to say this is part A, B, C, and D, all right? This is A, these are part B, this right here is going to be part C, and then these are part D. We gotta make four of these all together. So that's why we have eight, four, eight, and four. Uh, so we have each frame will have its own top piece that's unique and its own bottom piece that's unique. But then you have two sides and then you have two of these. Now these are basically, if you were to cut a piece of tubing and you cut a 45 and you cut a 45, uh, that's essentially what this is, but you gotta just trim it just ever so slightly because again, this, is going to be one four one long but it's got to match up to one inch in order to get these to fit into here you have to trim off 0.41 and make each of these sides one inch one inch and then you can put a nice little champer is what it's called on that edge so the bottom one will stay mitered, that's where you do a 45, but the top one will have a little chamfer on it, uh, and that'll be fun. I do want to make this overall height taller, mainly because the door from my garage to my house is elevated. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to also elevate these for an overall height, 72, 6 foot. These are going to be 11 inches. That way when I put a piece of one tubing on the bottom, one inch tubing, 
then it'll be a foot taller. Yeah, so these screens, you can have four of them. It'll be nice, roughly 72 inches from the top. Coverage-wise is about four foot by five foot. It'll be a nice addition to have, to be able to put these up wherever I need them to protect passerby from the arc rays and whatnot. There's our plan. And now the montage of building and learning, right? Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna show you how I do marking, just because I know sometimes that can get kind of crazy for some people. What I'm gonna do, these are 11 inch legs. So I mark it at 11, as close to that line as I can. And then I actually put an arrow or a V towards the side that I'm going to put the blade on top of. Because I want this edge right here to stop at 11. So my blade is essentially gonna take up this much material. So I, I wanna know what side of the material my blade is gonna be on my line. Um, so if I put my blade right in the center or if I put my blade right here, then my material is gonna be short. So I usually will make my line and then I do a notch or a V with like a check mark, boom, boom, that way. Or if I, depending on how I'm feeding my material, I might go like that, okay? So it's a simple down, straight, and then check over. So since this is 11, Boom, and I check towards this side, so I have a solid 11 piece here, and I'm, I'm not using the kerf right here. So let's take a moment. We'll line this up. So, I bring this blade down, and I want it to be on that mark. So the line is now on this side of the blade, and over here, you can see that still, there's my check mark. So if I go and cut just a little bit. Now I know that from here to there is my 11 inches. And we'll just verify that. I'll hook inside my little, right here. Come down there, 11 inches. That's just how I mark and lay out to make sure that I don't end up a blade width, a kerf. That is the width of the cut. I don't want to be that short on that piece, right? So that just ensures more accurate measurements, more accurate cutting. So there you go, check marks. All right, so before we speed this up, I wanted to talk about how I'm gonna cut this material real quick. Since I've got a lot of multiple cuts that are the same length, I'm gonna do what's called ganging up on the metal. And so I'll take my first piece that I've just cut here, and I'm gonna lay it on top of my stock. As I square up the ends and I pull it through the saw, I'm going to then bump it back towards the saw, and that way my piece that I'll cut from the raw stock is the exact same length as my first cut. And so I'm gonna make sure it's all square here real quick, and then as I am sure it's the same length, I tighten it down and I'll proceed to cut. And just to make sure that things are the way I thought they were, always measure it again. Make sure you're not too long or too short. And I'll just repeat. And I do this a lot in this project since I have to drill multiple holes in the same spot. And all these small little pieces that are the same, I gang up and do multiple cuts uh, on top of each other. So I'm just getting done with my first bunch of pieces and I have a short piece of raw stock left and I'm trying to figure out now the best way to cut it up to get the most out of my material. Oftentimes we calculate our overall length that we need for a project and that doesn't exactly lay out evenly on 20 foot pieces and so you're going to have some waste that you can't use and so I try to minimize that by cutting out oh, a couple of the feet here and then I'm gonna start cutting out a couple of my 45 chamfered pieces. And so I'm trying to just maximize this piece of drop. Here I'm starting to cut those little tiny chamfer pieces and they are kind of tedious. You don't wanna get them too small right off the bat. Even though we're gonna trim them, if I cut them too small, then I've gotta cut more. So I'm just kind of being extra meticulous with them. All right, so here I'm showing you the uh, little 45 chamfer piece that I've got to cut. 
just cut that 45 off and then uh, we'll line that up with this piece of tubing you see we're gonna have to trim that edge off right and then it'll line up with this other piece of tube So uh, I've got a lot of these 45s to put on, and I was marking them out, boom, 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 and then lining them all up, but I just barely put this little clamp on with the stop. So with that stop in there, set this down in, get it up to the stop, clamp it down, get it above it. So we have our frame, it is all drilled and we're ready to start welding things up. I checked it is square. Here's our little bit of a test fit right here. Got all our holes drilled. We have a screen laying down and it is fitting. So uh, now I'm going to go and weld up some of these joints trying not to fill in that hole. I don't want to do that, so we'll have to be a little careful when we weld around there. so we've got uh, the frame all welded up we got the legs welded up now I'm gonna put um, an adjustable stem on the frame for the feet all right frames welded up legs welded up now you might be wondering hey Masik how come you did the butt joint side but not the T joint side huh hey Masik how come you did that well, I've found from experience that when I weld all the way around, this will expand and contract and shrink, and then my foot will no longer be level. 
And so what I did is I just attached it on the sides because that's going to be plenty strong for uh, a welding screen. It's just going to sit there, right? And uh, got those all welded up. So these feet should still stay flat. Now, I'm going to, I've got one more step to do on this. I'm going to drill a hole. Boom, boom, about, you know, every two inches down on one side. After I drill that hole, I'm going to take this bolt and nut and I will weld it. Boom, on there. I will then take my cutoff wheel and I'll slice this and bend this. Bend this nut to a, like a T-handle. So it'll be on here and I'll be able to thread this through. Then I'm going to take all these little pieces of half inch tube. I think they're around three quarter. They fit inside here, a little bit of slop, right? But once I weld those on here, then my feet will be able to slide into them and then I'll be able to take that bolt and tighten them down. Now, the only reason I like this idea is for storage. Feet are gonna be perpendicular to the wall and it won't sit flat. So the idea is that I can take the feet off if I need to, but when I store, and I can adjust the feet, you know, straight on or 45 if I want to while it's sitting there, I can turn the feet parallel with the frame and everything should sit flush against the wall. All right, so that's why I uh, decided against just welding them straight on. I was, I was on according to our plan over here. I was just gonna weld those on, but the more I thought about it, the more I needed them to swivel. And that was my idea with the metal that I had lying around in the shop. So we're gonna weld those on, probably in line with uh, those holes that I've got drilled on the outside. All right, so these are the corners that were uh, done special, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna polish this one side up. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna polish all my welds just because it's a welding project, right? So I'm just gonna show you what it looks like to have that versus uh, the 90 degree corner down there, all right? All right, so you can see with a little bit of polish, uh, yeah, it looks, uh, you know, it's just different. You know, I think it looks, uh, you know, adds a little bit more than just your straight up, sanded down corner, right? And that doesn't look bad, but uh, you can do just a nice inside chamfer like that. And I think that uh, adds a little bit of touch to something, you know? So there you go. There you have it in all its glory. Got all our zip ties on. And our adjustable feet that uh, can swivel, right? And it actually nests really well, right? Because they can adjust, they can uh, kind of nest in each other. Uh, I'm not sure if you ever heard of a Z-Rack, but look it up, the Z-Racks kind of do this similar thing where they can nest with like a zero gap right and those are all on the same plane too so uh there you go there you have it welding screens are done i think we're done